and good morning here for I hope you are fabulous and thank you to everyone um, who submitted their work today and thank you for all the fantastic posters uh, showing lattice multiplication and all the wicked videos if it's about the life of pigeons or how to make cupcakes that is absolutely spectacular keep that up please everyone and make sure that you're taking part and taking care of your learning now i'm going to move my amazing face over here and today this video is about creating sentences with a fronted simile now uh, we had a look at iSpace and that was a test to see how much we can do now Obviously, there was a lot of things going on in iSpace. You had beginning with a verb, simile, preposition, uh, adverb, uh, conjunction, ed ending. So we're going to try to take them apart one by one by one by one. Now, lovely coffee, as it is in the morning. Um, now, what we're going to have a look at is this uh, we're going to have a look at creating a compound sentence or so we're going to remove the uh, modifier a creating compound sentences with a fronted simile so fronted means at the beginning and we all know how the simile works so today all we're going to do is create compound sentences with a simile at the front now at the end at the front at the beginning of the sentence so we're going to have a simile comma rest of the sentence simile comma sentence simile comma sentence that's it that's today's lesson that's all i want from you guys and pay extra special attention to typing in your capital letters and full stops even though if you're typing fair enough it might be tricky to add uh, capital letters and full stops when you're typing on your computer or your laptop or an iPad. I know I'm doing it a lot more now than I used to do it before we were doing home learning, but that's part of our learning. So we're going to learn how to add capital letters, commas, and full stops properly when we're typing. And also, um, try to pay an extra special attention to showing uh, underscore, the red little underscores, when you mistype something. That could be also super helpful, because uh, the computer can fix your spellings. How awesome is that? So without further ado, have a look uh, at what we're doing. So here you can see a duck, a some sort of duck. I don't know the name of that duck. There's a duck. And the duck is stomping. And I will try to create a compound sentence with a fronted simile. Now, to help myself, I will look at the success criteria. My first success criteria is, I know that similes compare people, things, or events metaphorically. One more time, I know that similes compare people, things, or events metaphorically. That means that I can compare something to something else without it being literal. It's not exactly a true thing, it's an idea. Metaphor means that it's not literal. When I am saying, oh, you are such an angel, that means you're just being nice to me. It doesn't mean that you're literally an angel, a spirit of God. That just means uh, that you're nice to me. If I'm saying, oh, thank you for bringing me that homework, you've been as fast as a flash. I'm not saying that you're exactly Flash, a superhero from Justice League, or a bolt of lightning. I'm just saying you were really quick. So that would mean metaphorically. And I think it would be a good idea for you to repeat it. Three, two, one, metaphorically. Well done. So similes is just comparing things to something else. Um, not literally, that's what metaphorically means. Now, in the brackets below, and you can see me here, uh, fixing it really, really quickly as I notice weird things, in green brackets, I've put like a something, 
or as a something. And I'm going to underline it in red, turn or into red, because those are two sentence stems that can help you create a simile. So I know that a simile is compared people, things, or events metaphorically, and they begin with like a or as a. Okay, so that's our first success criteria. Second one, I can start a sentence with a simile, and I'm going to put that up in red because I know you know how to do a simile. I've seen you do it. I've read your similes. You've written them for, uh, for me before. We've written and used similes in our writing before. But um, today we're going to use similes at the beginning of the sentence. So our second success criteria is I can start a sentence with a simile. Three, two, one, everyone. Well done. I can use a comma before a pronoun. That's our third success criterion. I can use a comma before a pronoun. Three, two, one, everyone. Well done. Now, pronoun are all the words that we use as a noun. The man the toy, my sentence is about a toy, a girl, a monster. And those could all be subjects of our sentences. So pronouns are all the words that we could use as a noun, as a subject. So, for example, when we were reading about Vajak Po, I hope you remember Vajak Po. Instead of writing Vajak, I could describe Vajak with different pronouns of the cat, the hero, the young cat, the beast, the kung fu master. There was a lot of things that I could say instead of the Vajak, and those were all the pronouns. So, and I will come back to pronouns as well. But the pronoun is the subject of a sentence. Um, please bear in mind that we are doing quite a lot over here. Okay, so now our last success criteria, and that's the one that is the simplest, and you're probably asking, oh, but I know how to do it, Mr. Koza. Yeah, you probably can, but I want you to pay attention to it because um, I've seen a lot of sentences, dear goodness gracious me, uh, without capital letters or full stops. And I appreciate that we're typing and we're new to that. Like I said, we're learning, but it has to be a habit. Doesn't matter what we write, you always need to punctuate a sentence. Capital letters and full stops. I will add that. So three to one, I can punctuate a uh, sentence. Three to one. And Full stops. And we all know how to use capital letters and full stops, don't we, Shakir? So please make sure that we do do that. So there we go. I can punctuate the sentence. Three, two, one. Do we all agree? Brilliant. Now, uh, let's get to it. So those were our success criteria. If you are keen, to look at the examples of the work. Please remember, with the videos, you can rewind me, pause, go back, go forward to the points that you're interested. You don't have to watch the whole of the video. Don't try to guess the video. Look at the bits that are relevant for you. So we have a duck that is stomping. And here I have a simple sentence. The duck stomped in fury. So first I'm going to show you an example, an example of something that wouldn't be a good piece of work. The duck stomped in fury like a truck. The duck stomped in a fury like a truck. So I compared the stomping of a duck to a truck, because trucks are loud. Um, 
you probably have a better simile, uh, the drug stomped in fury like an angry elephant, a dumb duck stomped in fury like a noisy volcano. There could be loads and loads and loads of ideas, but that's not what's important right now. Um, now, if I look at this sentence, that's a fine simile, it's a good simile, but it's not a good piece of work. Why? Because it has no capital letters or full stops. I can spot any. It doesn't have a simile at the front of the sentence, which I said that we're looking for today. At the front of the sentence, it's at the end of the sentence. And it doesn't have a comma uh, before a pronoun. So it's not a good piece of work. So shall we fix it? By the magic of control C and control V, I created a copy. The duck stumped like a fury. So mm, I've imagined a simile. That's awesome. But the second success criterion says I can start a sentence with a simile. So boom, remove that. Like a truck, the duck stumped in fury. So now I would invite you to pause the video and say, is that a perfect piece of work already because I moved the simile to the front? Or is there anything at all that I could improve? And I shall wait for you. And welcome back. So is that a good piece of work? No, it isn't, is it? Because it doesn't have a capital letter and full stop. So I need to remove that and add a capital letter, just like that. Like a track, the dog stomp in fury. I could add a full stop. I could use an ellipsis, but it doesn't fit because I wouldn't say it in a melancholy way. Like a truck, the duck stomped in fury. I would, in fact, use an exclamation mark, just to use different, different punctuation, not only full stops all the time. Like a truck, a, the duck stomped in fury. But I'm not done yet, because I can use a comma before a pronoun. So the duck, the sentence is about the duck, that's a pronoun, because I could use its name, possibly Rupert. I need a comma, like a truck, the duck stomped in fury. If you read the sentence, like a truck, the duck stomped in fury, you should hear a comma, you should hear me making a pause. So that is a good example of a sentence this is what I am looking for today. This is how we show that we can create a compound sentence with a fronted simile. We will use, the, we will use a lot of fronted features to make sure that our sentences begin in different ways. Now, allow me to show you some examples of your work. Uh, I'm going to move my face down. So right now I'm next to my sentences and um, let's have a look at the beginning you will have something like that in your quiz you will have a picture so you can see uh, the sentence oh I'm ever so sorry that should be right back I'm not cutting out those little mistakes all the time because there isn't enough time in the day for me to record one perfect video um, and mistakes happen to me all the time. You've seen me work, you know that we make mistakes all the time. That's just a part of life. So you will have a picture, and also you will have two phrases, we, or clauses, we call them phrases. The man bounced in his chair like a basketball. And if you read it, already, and that's why it's so important to read your sentence aloud before, it already sounds quite sensible, doesn't it? Because the man bounced in his chair like a basketball. The man bounced in his chair like a basketball. It sounds okay, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't have a capital letter or a full stop. 
the simile is not at the front yet, and it doesn't have a comma, does it? So what I will do, uh, this is a different program than a different app, as young people say these days, than you will use, so I have to insert a text box, you'll just type it in your quiz. So the man bounced in his chair. So I'm going to type that, the man bounced in his chair. Now you see, uh, my app is super, super helpful, and I'm sure it happened to you at some point, because it's trying to help me by adding a capital letter. And that's how your head should work like. You should always look for that capital letter, be like a computer. But I want to put the simile at the front of the sentence, not at the end. So I shouldn't start with this one. That the simile is like a basketball. So I'm going to put like a basketball face. And I can stretch that so it's nice and long and I can see it. Like a basketball, the man bounced in his chair. You see? Like a basketball, the man bounced in his chair. Try to read it a couple of time, times. You will notice that you can hear the comma. So like a basketball, the man bounced in his chair. Now I have to remove the capital letter because I don't want to have a random capital letter. It's not a name. That stick man is not called the man. People don't say, hello, the man. That's not his name. It's just the man. Like a basketball, the man bounced in his chair. And now we're going to take a 10 second break. And I would like you to read this sentence aloud and tell me what's the last thing that I'm missing. Is that a perfect sentence now? Think about our success criteria. You can rewind to the front to see. Or you can rewind to the front to see me talking about what's actually missing. And And if your answer was capital letter, that you're wrong. Ha. Your answer was full stop or a punctuation. Um, I couldn't use a question mark. Ellipsis, once again, is not super useful in that case. Uh, this one, actually, I would put a full stop on. So now you see I meet all the steps to success, like a basketball, is a simile because it compares the man the way he's jumping to a basketball. We all know what that is. There could be better similes, but that's just exam an example for you to think of. Uh, I have a comma before the pronoun. The pronoun is the man. And the rest of the sentence with a punctuation, boom, done. That is... A piece of work that I can put a smiley face next to. It meets all the success criteria. I have simile at the front, beginning with a simile. I have comma before a pronoun. I have punctuation at the end. Done. There's nothing else to do. Um, that will be your first two or three questions. Um, another couple of sentences uh, will be this. Um, Tom snuck through the door. So you will have a picture and a simple sentence. In those questions, you will have to add your own simile at the front, not at the end, at the front. So now I will need something, 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 comma, Tom snuck through the door. Like like a crafty snake, Tom snuck through the door. Like a cheeky salesman, Tom snuck through the door. 
Like a cold wind, Tom snuck through the door. Like a noise from a party, Tom snuck through the door. There could be tons and tons of ideas. Have a look at the picture of the, the cat. Some of you possibly never watched Tom and Jerry cartoons, so this one is mostly for your adults, I think. But I think it's pretty straightforward. So you will have to read the sentence, look at the picture, and underneath that sentence, you have to add a simile at the front. Not at the end, at the front. Simile at the front, comma before a pronoun, punctuation, done. And you're going to do it for a couple of more examples. That might not be there. Right? I hope that this is straightforward and I am looking forward to showing some examples of your work tomorrow. Um, before we go, there's one thing that I want to include and that's going to be a blank slide just like that. And In your quiz, you will have to log in and you will have to add your emails. And some of you send me a message saying, Oh, Mr. Koza, but I don't have an email. Well, yes, yes, you do. Thank you very much, Mr. Wicks. Mr. Wicks made sure that we have everything we need to log in uh, to Google Classroom Services. So what you will do is you, your username is an email address. You don't use it as an email, but technically it's an email, a Gmail account, it's a Google account. So it comes with an email, we just don't use it in an email form. So for example, if we had Varjak Paul in our class, uh, their login probably would be like Varjak P123.45. At npsmat.org. Now, this part, it's your username. This part is our school email. That will be the same for everyone. Doesn't matter who you are. This part will be different. And this part is the login that you use for IXL, uh, for Accelerated Reader. We use the whole of your login to, uh, to put in. That will be one of the first questions in your quiz. And what it allows me to do is to see everyone's answer separately. Without that, I can see everyone, and I can see that 10 out of 20 kids, uh, 10 out of 20 kids done, great on question three in this quiz or a lot of children six out of 20 didn't answer question number four and that tells me what we should be doing the next day or in the future but here i can look individually at shaquille's work at isla's work at harry's work if he submits any at everyone's work right so make sure that you use your email some of you are already doing that and you're doing a fantastic job out of it if there are any problems, you know where to find me. Just type something in and I shall try to respond. Uh, once again, well done to everyone who is doing their work. Please remember what about success criteria. I have nothing else to say because you can watch this lesson over and 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 over again. You can pause and move it forward however you like until you get it right. Looking forward to seeing your work and stay awesome. Yay.